want to create a more engaging and interactive classroom right from the start. Now, as teachers, we know the importance of those first few weeks. They set the tone for the entire school year. Engaging activities not only build excitement, but also establish a solid foundation for learning. And today I'll share some of my favorite activities to kick off the first three weeks of school, setting the stage for an exciting year of science exploration. Hi, I'm Christy. I'm a middle school science teacher with over 25 years experience in the classroom, and I love helping other teachers empower their students to take more ownership of their learning. So, Week one is really about setting the stage. It's about getting to know your students and having them get to know each other. So what I like to do is I like to start the first day with some type of teamwork, team building challenge. Now in eighth grade, I like to do the stacking cups activity where I challenge my students to use the tool, the octopus, which is rubber bands and some string, and each person holds onto one piece of the string and they're using that to pick up the cups and stack them into a pyramid shape to start with. And then I have other challenging shapes for them to create after they get that one done. And the idea is they cannot touch the cups with their hands. They can only use the octopus tool to help them, even if they do knock it over and knock it onto the ground. For my seventh graders, I like to do the Save Fred activity where they're using a gummy worm to represent Fred and they have a gummy lifesaver to represent its life preserver. And Fred has fallen into the ocean, his boat has tipped over, and he forgot to put on his life vest. So their job is to use um, paper clips to move the life preserver and put it onto Fred the gummy worm. Now, the idea is they cannot touch anything with their hands. All they're allowed to use is the, pe the paper clips to help them do this activity. And they work in teams of two. So other things that you can do, other challenges, are to give them some puzzle pieces. I have this puzzle piece where they have four different puzzle pieces and they have to make a square. And once they have that, I give them another puzzle piece, which is an actual square, and they have to recreate that square again with that new puzzle piece, which represents new pieces of information in science. Because in science, remember, we're always learning. As we get better technology, we get more data, and we're changing our hypotheses, we're changing our conclusions as we get more information. So I like to bring that activity to help them understand how science is an ever-evolving subject. On the second day, that's when I like to talk about growth mindset. And I have my students learn about famous people, people they've heard about that are successful, but how they became successful and how during their journey of going and becoming successful, they actually failed along the way. They made mistakes. Some went bankrupt. Some never sold anything during their lifetime, right? They were rejected. They were fired. And so I want them to learn that, yes, Success is the goal, but along that goal is the journey and that you are gonna make mistakes along the way. In fact, I tell them all the time, in middle school, your job is to make mistakes. Your job is to figure it out, to challenge yourself, to grow, and in doing that and trying new things, you're going to make mistakes along the way. And that's okay, because if you're making mistakes, that means you're learning and you're improving because no one gets to where they are without making mistakes along the way. So we talk about the growth mindset, we have a reflection activity, they learn about different people like um, the Beatles and uh, Henry Ford, they learn about um, Jay-Z and all these different people, uh, Maya Angelou, and they um, learn about how they became successful and the challenges they faced along the way. On the third day, that's when I do a get to know you activity where they create lab coats and on the lab coats, they're drawing pictures of things that represent them. They're writing down their goals for the year. They're writing down uh, three words that um, they want to think about and reflect on. So they're doing a get to know you activity on that third day. 
On the fourth day and the fifth day, that's when I'm introducing claim evidence reasoning. And I introduce it right at the beginning. And what I have them do is a forensics activity where they have to solve the case of Sir Edward Berkshire III. And they're going through, they're looking at the police incident reports, they're looking at the personal profiles of the suspect, and, or all the different suspects and the victim. They are looking at the forensics evidence of the blood work, the DNA. They're looking at the autopsy reports and they're putting it all together and they're figuring out what actually happened to Sir Edward Berkshire III. Was it um, a murder or did he die of natural causes? And then they have to explain their case and present their findings in a claim evidence reasoning format. And we have a lot of discussions along the way. We talk about who it could be or what could have happened and why. And, you know, we talk about reasonable doubt. You know, could that blood have gotten there some other way? Could the fingerprints ended up on that glass for some other reason? Is it reasonable that this would happen? So that's what we're going over. And we do that. It takes two days to do this uh, forensics activity. So that's week one. In week two, we get right into science. Now for most of my students, they've been taught the scientific method, but it's been a while. And as middle schoolers, they forget a lot. So I take them through a scientific method activity and we talk about um, commercials. And commercials say a lot of things, like the paper towel commercials. Well, not every single paper towel can be the best, but they all claim they're the strongest or they claim that they can clean up the most. So we look at the paper towel commercials and um, there are some great uh, ones on YouTube from like the 80s and 90s. So we look at those and then they create a test to test out the paper towels. And I have half the class doing a strength test. How are you gonna do that one? And half the class is doing an absorbency test. And of course we have different paper towels to choose from. And what I do is I ask the students to bring in a paper towel from home. And if we can't, I know that I also have paper towels ready to go. I do like them to test out the school paper towel, that brown one that we all love. And then I have them test out usually Bounty or Brawny. Um, we test out a generic one. We test out Costco's, Kirkland's brand. So we have a lot of variety of different paper towels that we are looking at. And we're looking at which one really is the best for absorbency, which one really is the best for strength, and what they think the best overall would be. And how does that school paper towel stack up to um, the other ones. <laughs> so that takes about one week to go through it all because I like to have them testing it and you know modifying their directions, having them write out the directions and then switch with another group to see if the group can um, get the same results following that other group's directions. So we talk about the importance of writing procedures of independent and dependent variables and I'm bringing up those words. On the last week, that third week, now we're getting into the engineering design process. And with that one, they're doing the coffee cup challenge. So I give them a styrofoam cup and I tell them that that was last year's winner and they have to improve upon it to keep the coffee hot. So they can use different materials. I like them to use materials from home, um, recycled materials. They are not allowed to have anything pre-made so they can't come in with a ceramic mug or um, with their own thermos. Right? They have to make it from home um, and modify the design. They are allowed to use a lid, but they have to make their own lid. So I had students making lids out of cardboard and wrapping them up with aluminum foil. Uh, during this time, since it is the engineering design process, we are brainstorming, we are researching, we're looking at the difference between insulators and conductors and what insulators do. And they're writing their blueprints, they're testing it, they're modifying it, and they're testing again. So they're trying to solve a solution going through the whole entire engineering design process as they're doing it. So that's what I like to do for my first three weeks. It gets the students engaged. It gets them excited about um, this year and science. They are actively doing hands-on activities and it kind of sets the tone because they know that this class is going to be a class they don't want to miss because they are doing some great fun activities. So set the tone of your class for the first three weeks by doing these activities. And if you would like this activities ready to go with the lesson plans ready, everything you need, I do have this three week activity, the back to school bundle ready to go for you. I'll leave a link in the description. If you found this video helpful and informative, and if you liked it, don't forget to share it, 
like it and hit that notification for more videos like this. Have a wonderful school year.